Hi guys, my name is Karsten Craning, otherwise known as Meme St. Laurent, and let's talk about stuff. So today we're going to talk about the punk rock roots between fashion and music, and we are going to talk, uh, it's going to be a three-part series. First we're going to talk about Raph Simmons, then we're going to talk about Jun Takahashi's Undercover, and then we're going to be talking about Takahiro Miyashita's Number 9 and The Soloist. These are all three really influential designers today in the high fashion and streetwear scene and they all have punk rock roots. First off, the thing about punk rock is that what you're thinking probably isn't correct. The word punk rock has a stigma. You're probably thinking about Green Day and Blink-182 and all those 2000s pop punk bands. You're probably thinking about some white acne ridden kid in his room thinking to himself, why doesn't mom understand me? Probably thinking about all those times you clicked on a Vine compilation and halfway through it got hijacked by Vi My Chemical Romance memes. Probably thinking about that time in fifth grade when Sally rejected you from the school mixer and you sat under the bleachers the whole time listening to Boulevard of Broken Dreams thinking, this hits me right here. That is not the punk rock we're gonna be talking about today. Instead, we're gonna get down to the roots where it started and I'm gonna have to give you guys a little bit of a history and this isn't a complete history in any ways, it's going to be very brief, and I encourage you guys to look up like more full con uh, context and look it up on YouTube. There are some great videos, as well as some great books you guys can read. Punk rock is disputed where it really started. It's a safe place to say is in Detroit with bands like The Stooges and The MC5. Later on, these bands went um, to influence a lot of bands, and uh, The Velvet Underground would be another one of those bands that were really influential at the time. And in New York, there was this extremely uh, prominent club called CBGB, which had a really diverse mix of artists that came from it. It was really the Dover Street market of punk rock, as you had all these different artists coming in with different ideas, and you had a huge selection and a wide variety. And all these artists really got the punk label on them because of that. GB was the birthplace of punk as all these different bands came out, such as the Ramones, Patti Smith, Television, Richard Hell. And it stayed in New York in this very confined space for a long time until Malcolm McLaren, who was visiting America from London, came in and it said he saw Richard Hell's ripped clothing and he took those ideas of punk rock back to England where he owned a, bo a boutique called Sex. And from there, he also managed a little band called the Sex Pistols and he started uh, um, promoting them and they blew up really big in the UK and that's where we get all this UK culture of the traditional punk like leather jackets, studded belts, um, patches, ripped clothing out of that shop sex and from the band the Sex Pistols. The head designer at uh, Malcolm's shop sex who was selling the most stuff was uh, this designer named uh, Vivian Westwood who is extremely influential in fashion as a whole her styles of like patches, studs, um, ripped clothing is just extremely influential and you can see it everywhere. A good example of this is um, on Playboy Cardi's self-titled album, mixtape, whatever it is, he's wearing a Vivian Westwood shirt. He stayed in full swing around the time of the Sex Pistols and it was big in England, it was big in America, and then it kind of died down and broke into many separate little parts and some and different subgenres some notable subgenres would be hardcore punk um post punk um riot girl grunge um horror punk emo pop punk all of these subgenres which all have the punk label sound really differently but they're all labeled punk punk is really about um it's big in youth culture it's about embodying the spirit of like rebelling against the man and all that angsty stuff but as well as just challenging the norms of society. And uh, a lot of designers have taken that into place and that's where we're gonna talk about Raph Simmons. Raph Simmons, of course, grew up in Belgium in the 1980s, 1970s, somewhere along those lines. And he was really involved in the youth culture and was heavily inspired by it. And part of that culture would be punk rock. And we can see that in especially his early collections and we're gonna analyze that just a little bit today. So the first collection we're going to analyze is Autumn Winter 1996, We Only Come Out at Night. Autumn Winter 1996 was heavily inspired by goth culture, which is a subgenre of punk and also new wave a little bit. Um, pretty much uh, goth culture is all about wearing all black. Um, it was heavily inspired by the look of bands like Sue and the Banshees and The Cure and goth music itself got its roots out of Joy Division. And um, we see this a lot in this Raph collection. The collection features a lot of like very black looks and the models have jet black dyed hair 
And they also have these long black overcoats, which are really cool and kind of gothic looking, like I'm gonna go start singing Joy Division and all that stuff. It's really fun. Um, besides that, it's uh, the way Raph formatted the, this collection was very different than how you, a designer would normally format a collection. Usually they have a runway where it's a show, people come and see it and they watch. These models walk down a runway and boom, that's it. Instead, Raph uh, put on VHS format and pretty much he just filmed the models hanging around this like apartment or something like that. They're just all kind of bopping around a house looking all goth and it's pretty much just like uh, Goth Frat, um, his video. Who doesn't like cracking open a cold one with the boys and listening to Boys Don't Cry? I do. Also the collection was named after a Smashing Pumpkin song, We Only Come Out at Night, and they're very gothy and grungy in their own right, so it makes sense. Next collection we're going to take a look at is Spring Summer 98, where we see some very blatant punk references. Um, this is called, this collection was called Black Palms, and it's so blatantly punk, literally one of the shirts just says the Sex Pistols over it. Also, we see like this awesome heavy metal tee, which was kind of groundbreaking because like not a lot of designers were doing that, but we can see how forward Raph's thinking was as we have a lot of brands today playing with like the heavy metal, like gothic logos and stuff like that. I think the Vediments, um, gothic like evil hoodie that's hard rock. And then also the brand uh, Yang Li has their diffusion line, Samizdat, which is all about a fake kind of heavy metal post punk band and it's fake though it's not real but it all has that aesthetic built into it yes i know how to pronounce vet moss but i'm pronouncing it vitamins in autumn winter uh 98 99 we see a lot of distressed knitwear and kind of destroyed knitwear and that's all very much a callback to vivian westwood and what she did in her collections and items then we also have this uh a lot of punk imagery. We have the anarchy symbol on some garments and it just echoes that more. In Autumn Winter 99-2000, it's called Disorder, Incubation, Isolation. This collection is again really goth. You see that motif that Raph's using again of the jet black dyed hair as well as there's some bl uh, all black looks and there's these really cool black cloaks that he uses. Um, this collection is all really inspired by Joy Division which is a little band from Manchester which never really took off until their song got on 13 reasons why and then now they all live happily ever after oh that's not why Joy Division took off it's actually because they're an extremely influential post-punk band but their artwork is very minimalistic and depressing so is their music it's very kind of there's some ambient vibes in it it's bleak it's just depressing Joy Division is really really depressing but also awesome and you can see a lot of that in Raph's collection. Um, it kind of has some callbacks to some Joy Division art, like uh, Closer, the album cover for that, has these religious vibes, which you see again with these black cloaks, which almost look like cult cloaks, but they're really finely well tailored and they kind of look like a Sith Lord would wear them. Collection, of course, is also named after three Joy Division songs. Disorder, Incubation, and Isolation are all Joy Division songs. Um, as well as the ad campaign uh, featured these, uh, like, I don't know how to describe them. They're like flag banner things that uh, said Teenage Ride on it, which is a reference to the art avant-garde post-punk band, grunge band, Sonic Youth, and one of their most popular songs. Sonic Youth was really influential on the alternative rock scenes as well as the grunge scenes, and you're going to be seeing a lot of them later. Autumn, Winter, 0102, Riot, Riot, Riot. Riot X3 is one of the most coveted RAF collections, and it is possibly the most blatantly punk one. From its uh, cut-off, kind of distressed hoodies to its also repurposed military garments, it's they have a couple of all-black kind of goth looks, as well as the patches which are sewn onto a lot of the garments. The patches which are roughly sewn into the garments and in a kind of DIY manner are very reminiscent of Vivian Westwood, some of her pieces, as well as they're just, they're loaded with punk references on them. The patches have Joy Division, David Bowie, Sonic Youth, Patti Smith, um, Manic Street Preachers, not all of these are necessarily punk but they're just loaded with all kinds of just dark kind of like punkish imagery. The patches um, 
patches on punk clothing has always been a huge tradition. Uh, if you ever go to like a punk store or see a real like punk dude, you're gonna see like loads of patches for bands on them, like The Misfits or whatever, Black Flag or whatever they listen to. And Raf is really doing this in his own way, even though not all the bands are punk, he's really kind of like representing the bands on the clothing. Also the repurposed Grail Riot 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 Bomber, which is that camo bomber and it's kind of repurposed military wear. Repurposed military wear is something that's been seen in punk scenes ever since the 80s here and there. Not huge, but it's there. Then there's also this beautiful red and black sweater with the Patti Smith patch on and a couple of others. And that's a callback to Kurt Cobain. And you will literally see every single designer in the world have a red and black Kurt Cobain sweater to the point where it's annoying. Autumn Winter 0304 Closer is Raph's dream come true. Um, he gets to collaborate with Peter Seville, who is the guy who was doing all the artwork for Factory Records, which had Joy Division and New Order on it. And of course, I think he wanted to do this collaboration for years, and he finally got to do it with this um, season and this collection. And he went sicko mode, pretty much, on where he put like the Factory Records, New Order, Joy Division, um, graphics. He put them everywhere. He put them on the back of parkas, he put them on the back of jackets, he put them on t-shirts, he put them on hoodie. Joy Division, New Order, Bauhaus imagery, absolutely everywhere. It's, this is the collection where we get the Travis Scott parka, you know, the one he wore in that one song where he's like, don't you open up the window, don't you, uh, you know the one. And then this is also where we get that uh, amazing grail Urban Outfitters knockoff of the New Order sweater. So it's, it's a great, really iconic collection. Raph's use of graphics at the time was actually pretty revolutionary. He was um, actually knitting the designs into the sweater as well as hand painting parkas and just like experimentation with graphics and logo design on garments was, uh, this was really influential. This is the reason we see a lot of parkas and coats that are very graphic heavy as well as like for example, the Enfants Riches to Prime sweaters, which have the graphics actually weaved into the design of the sweater. And we're going to stop observing Raph's individual collections from now, uh, mostly because it's really repetitive and he uses the same motifs over and over and over again. And these were really the developmental years of Raph's uh, style. We see a lot more of the parkas with the graphics on them and a lot more of the patches and all that punk imagery. And also the references he uses are the same. He uses Christine F. in Riot, 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 and then he uses it again in his uh, Spring Summer 19, I want to say, collection. Not exactly sure on that one. Feel free to correct me. But he also uses uh, the Peter Seville graphics again in Spring Summer 18. And he makes the same references. Um, Fall Winter 17 is a little bit notable because there's some new ones there. It's all Robert Maplethorpe's uh, photography. But again, we see Patti Smith. And um, that's actually, the photography in that collection is really cool. Um, if you want to read more about Patti Smith and Robert Maplethorpe, I would recommend checking out the book, Just Kids. It's really good, and you know it's good because it's a meme. And books that are memes are really rare, so that just shows you that it's really good. Raph's relationship with punk rock is not as obvious as the other designers we're going to look at. He's not using, like, the studs. He doesn't have the traditional... Um, the traditional punk aesthetic really of just black leather studs. He doesn't use the same silhouettes. It's not like tight skinny jeans and Doc Martens, but it's still very punk in the way where he's challenging the norms. He really takes punk imagery and the idea and the spirit of going against the norms of society and challenging the ideas which are at hand and kind of brings it into the 21st century. He puts his own spin on it and his own Raph spin and he really changed fashion and streetwear as we know it today. Raph Simmons is one of the most influential um, figures in fashion and all of those collections which I just showed you were very much 15, 10 years before their time. Um, there's a reason that there's an ASAP Rocky song called Raph. Um, his designs have been copied and inspired many, many looks which we see today, which are hallmarks of fashion. I could list out all the trends that we have today and show you that they originate from Raph Simmons. 
but I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna do that for a later video. With that, I'm going to leave you guys. Um, please like, subscribe. Um, my Instagram is Meme Saint Laurent, and I will link that down there, as well as my personal, where I just kind of have some more fit pics and stuff like that, is Karsten Craning. And um, yeah, next time we're going to be talking about Undercover by Juan Takashi, and uh, Takahiro Miyashita's number nine, and the soloist, so stay tuned.